This is a compilation video of what I think are the best Transformers figures I have come across this year. There's no particular order and I'm not including any of the Robeson stuff because they're all awesome. This is a Studio Series 100 Bumblebee from Rise of the Beasts. Now this is how the figure comes straight out of the box and one of the first things we need to do is rotate the chest pieces on both sides just like so. Now looking at this figure it does look very very nice. Now while the head sculpt doesn't look too bad the eyes look horrible. I'm not a big fan of the color of paint they used but a closer look at the head sculpt you can see that little area for the Autobot insignia. Neo. And I think the mechanical nature of his face looks great along with that silver paint. And yeah, the head sculpt is really nice. Here's a look at the back. There's a little bit of detail. Underneath that in this area, you can see some stuff going on as well. I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea how to describe that. You have that bumper at the top, which we will see more in the vehicle mode of the figure. You have that chest piece, which is similar to Bumblebee in the other movies. And this is one of the better looking chest pieces I have seen on a Bumblebee figure. It looks very sleek and clean along with that nice silver paint going through it. The arms have a nice yellow molded plastic with some silver paint on them. You can see a little bit of detail in this area. It really does look very nice and mechanical. You have a little bit of extra detail on the shoulder piece. I really don't like how the hands are molded onto the arms so they have no rotation of their own. And then you can see some of the paint applications on the hand. Unfortunately though it has bled over into other areas of the figure. This seems to be a recurring thing with Hasbro figures because my Legacy Elite 1 has the same issue as well. Get your shit together Hasbro. You have some nice intricate detail in the abdomen area. Down over to the legs, pretty basic over here you have some of the silver paint. More of the legs down here with a really nice sculpt and a little bit of silver paint and some detail. You see that? You see the little detail right there? Down over to the feet, it kind of looks like he's wearing shoes in my opinion. You can see some of the simple sculpt work it has on this side as well as the other side. Now the figure has a good weight to it, which is really nice. If we take a look at the back, you can see some more inside car details on the doors. A very, very flat backpack, which is nice. Further down to the legs, not too much to say there. Down over here are the feet, which form the back part of the vehicle mode. Kind of like how G1 Bumblebee's feet were the front of its vehicle mode. There are a few hollow spots throughout the figure, mainly on the arms and a little bit on the legs, but not too much, which is really nice. For articulation, the head can move up and down. You can spin it a full 360. These little chest pieces can move, mainly for the transformation though. They can also be a little bit difficult to work with. The arms can rotate, but this does get in the way, unfortunately. The arms can also move out about that high and rotate over there. There's also a elbow bend. And like I said earlier, the hand is attached to the arm, so there is no rotation there. These doors can move. I really do wish this could move back so we could get more of an arm rotation. You get some rotation at the waist which can go all the way around. These legs can move out to the side. You can you can bring them forward and you can bring them back. You can rotate the legs like so and a 90 degree knee bend. The feet can't move forward or back, which is unfortunate, but you do get a side to side pivot, which is nice, as well as a full 360 foot rotation. You get his blaster, which has a really nice mold to it. Not as good looking as the B127 version, in my opinion. You can see the molds of the two are very different. This one is also cast in a yellow plastic and then covered in paint. I definitely think I like this one a lot better. Next, we have the sword, which is kind of disappointing. It's all yellow plastic and it it really would have been nice to give it some paint, which I might do on my own. The sword tabs into this side of the arm, and it really does just blend in with the rest of the figure because of the lack of paint. The blaster just plugs in right over here into the hand, and there he is sporting both of his weapons. There is also weapon storage at the back. Basically, you can place this right over there, and it seems like it stays in place pretty well. For the blade, just tab it in on there like so, and I'm really surprised the connection isn't loose on either of these. And since I kind of just skipped over the box art, here's a quick look at that. You have Bumblebee looking really cool over there. Some of that artwork on the side, and here is the other side. And then here's a look at the back of the box. And then here is the backdrop of what seems to be a volcano. I feel like that's kind of obvious. And then it's kind of hard to see, but you can see some of the tire tracks. Here he is next to other Studio Series Bumblebee figures. He's a bit taller than B127 and a bit shorter than Dark of the Moon Bumblebee. And in terms of design, I think this one looks the best, especially when compared to the Dark of the Moon Bumblebee, which I do like, but next to this, it looks kind of like a jumbled mess. Here he is next to a KO of the Studio Series 38 Optimus. Miss Prime, RC from the Bumblebee movie, Starscream from the Bumblebee movie, and Human Alliance Bumblebee. Side by side with the B127 Bumblebee, you can't see a lot of the differences between the two figures. This one obviously doesn't have the door wings on it, and it has a battle mask. The back on this is also much less appealing than the one on here. And compared to the Dark of the Moon Bumblebee, you can see the head sculpts are vastly different. They do share some similarities, like the chest pieces and the door wings. And the chest on this looks much better than the one on here. Now, luckily, the transformation on here is very easy to do. First, let's go back to the 
legs. What you want to do is flip these pieces out on the legs. Now we can rotate the feet and bring them in. Rotate this piece like so and then get it to line up in place. Now go ahead and just do the same exact thing on the other side. Now we can bring the legs together which can be a little bit tricky. The best way is to hook that piece and then snap it in. Now what we want to do is fold out this entire back section. So now that we've done that we need to do the chest pieces and we're not going to make them straight like that. We're going to bring them down to where both of these pieces are angled like this. It's very important, trust me. Now we just untab the chest piece. Now we can untab the chest piece, bringing it up so that way we can connect the top piece to the front of the car. And then just push it into place. And that's why these pieces need to be angled down instead of straight, so this would be easier to tab in. To finish up the top section, we just need to tab it into place. Now close both of the doors. Make sure that head is straight and now bring in the arms like so. Now rotate them to where they're facing like this. Make sure that's orientated the right way. Bring in the wheels and snap them into place. Lastly, bring the arms down. And there is a place for them to tab into. And here is the vehicle mode for Bumblebee. It is a really nice look vehicle mode. I really like how it's basically just an off-road version of what we saw from the 2007 movie. I like the extra bumper pieces here. You have some very nice headlights going on. You can see a bit of the grill. You have this reinforced piece here with some lights up at the top. You have the classic two stripes going through the top of the car mode. Some nice rugged off-road wheels. Now I don't like how the arms stick out at the bottom. It looks really ugly in my opinion. It really ruins the side profile of the car mode and it is the worst thing about the figure. At the back you have a uh, this thing. Uh, I don't know what it's called. And at the back of the vehicle mode you have this nice little reinforced piece. This section is mostly black with some red taillights. Here's a quick look at the underneath of the figure and this is a very nice vehicle mode. Probably one of my favorites for Bumblebee. Minus this part right here. Now there is weapon storage. The blade will tab into this section right over there and for the blaster you just put it on the back and they do hold in place. One issue I do have with the vehicle mode is that this part right here isn't completely flush. You can see there's a gap over here and a gap between the windows. This is the APC Toys Optimus Prime. We're gonna go over the figure's robot mode, the vehicle mode, and an interesting hidden detail the figure has. So stick around, please. This is essentially a knockoff made by a third party company of the Transformers Prime Optimus Prime figure. I was referring to one already among us. So it's unlicensed and a copy of a pre-existing figure, meaning it's technically a bootleg, meaning I can put bootleg in the title of this video for extra views. I did buy this with my own money from the Chosey store. For the packaging, you get some really cool artwork of Optimus Prime and a bit more of him right there. I like the design at the back. Now let's open him up. Here is the figure and I love the way this guy looks. Now APC Toys has made different versions of this figure. There's another color scheme and I kind of wish I was able to get that one because I do prefer the colors on that more than this. But this one is still pretty good. This one definitely has a more darker and muted color scheme just like the Takara release of their Transformers Prime Optimus Prime. Now I do believe there is some sort of metallic paint job going on because you can see some sort of metal flakes. It's even more apparent on the legs. The figure itself starting with the head sculpt you get a nice darker blue head. It is pretty well done. I mean it is copied from the original figure. Fourth part companies essentially copy and paste authentic figures, but I still think it's done very well. I do like the mouth guard on the figure. There is a regular face version of the head the figure comes with, and I'll show that later. The forehead piece, the vents on the side, and the eyes are done really well. There's some more nice detail at the back, as well as some light piping, so instead of the figure looking dead, he can look somewhat alive. Life death, life death. Further down the head into this area, you get a lot of detail going on. It looks really nice. I do like the translucent blue on the chest piece, and how you can see the really nice designs going on the inside. It was like this in the original release as well. Well, further down you go to the skinny abdomen area and there is a lot of nice sculpt work and detail going on here. You get a bit of yellow paint on there and I will say I'm not the biggest fan of the brownish color that appears on certain parts of this figure. You can see it on the arms at the top over here as well as on the hands and legs. It is nitpicky and it is kind of just my personal preference so I don't really count that against the figure. Oh my god, are you playing with yourself? His arms are looking nice and bold, sculpted really well. And here's a quick look at the inside. The hands are also done pretty well. If you lift these shoulder pieces up, you do get a little bit of detail inside. It might be a little bit hard to see. Further down, you get his slim legs, wheels on this side, a little bit of silver paint over here, and some nice detail on the inside. And just like the original, the back of the legs do look kind of weird. I do feel like this kind of sticks out, but it's not that big of a deal. Turn the figure over to the back, you get his iconic smokestacks. I do like how this section all folds up. Now these back parts over here are kind of awkward. On my copy of the figure, they don't want to stay in all the way. As much as I want to tab them in, sometimes they kind of just pop out. Since it is attached to these, I think it has something to do with trying to get these to be positioned just exactly right so it stays in. But honestly, it's not something I'm going to bother with trying to get these to fit exactly right because I don't care that much. So we're just going to move on. A better look at the back if you can see that over there and the back of the rest of the legs, not too much. Now, if we open this back section up, there is some hidden detail inside the figure. I think it's impressive that Hasbro and Takara originally did this. Like, look at all the things they put on the 
the console. No one's gonna see this until you open up the back of the figure. I do feel like I kind of just sped through that section. There isn't a whole lot of detail on the figure. The main parts really being this part of the legs, the abdomen, the chest, and this top part over here. Since it is from the animated series, it's not gonna have a whole lot of detail, which is fine. I really do like this figure and I think it looks amazing. Now I do have the APC Toys Dark Master Megatron. Here's a size comparison of the two. And here we have some size comparisons with some other Optimus Prime figures. And here he is next to Predaking, the only original Transformers Prime figure that I own. Now in terms of the figure's articulation, you get a up and down head movement, a full 360 rotation, a 360 arm rotation. Move this out of the way and the arms can move out there. This can untab, so you could use that to your advantage if you wanted to. I will say it does untab a lot when trying to pose the figure. Bicep rotation, a 90 degree elbow bend. The hand rotation on this figure is pretty tight. Doesn't seem I can get it to go a full 360. Waist rotation, but it does move from back there. The legs can move up there. You can bring them out to the side and you can bring them back. Leg rotation. There is a knee bend that goes 90 degrees. Pretty good foot pivots that goes both ways. You can move it back, not really forward. Foot movement down. So the articulation on this figure is pretty standard. Now the legs aren't super loose, but they do tend to spread apart when trying to pose. So that is kind of annoying. Overall, the sculpt work proportions and colors on this figure are fantastic. And it's really nice that APC Toys is taking some of these older figures and giving people another chance to get them. And I do believe they make slight improvements and modifications on the figures as well. Accessories wise. Oh, come here. This is the other head sculpt he comes with. This does also have light piping at the back and the face sculpt is pretty good, but it does kind of look like he's disappointed in me. Once again, though, I do prefer the closed off mouthpiece version, so I will be using that. You get two Energon blades that are done really well. I love the translucent blue on them. His two blasters and the sculpt and detail on here is done fantastic. I do like the little, I guess, sparkles or whatever they have going on. It gives it a very space themed. However, I do like APC's toys other version where the tips were kind of singed. You can also bring the blaster and the Energon sword together like that. For uh, that look, I'm going to be honest, I don't remember if this was a thing in the show. And lastly, you do get the Star Saber and this looks really amazing. I love the silver paint on here and this gold piece. This is just absolutely fantastic. One shall stand, one shall fall. Why throw it? fighting you silly geese to put this on the figure we're going to take off this bottom piece put it in his hand and put this back on and it's hard to see but this bottom part does need to line up with the screw and because of this hand guard it is kind of awkward to get it in all the way you can have it there but now you can't really turn it because the fingers are in the way you could try to tilt it in like this and then bring it down now this piece is kind of hard to see it does go in that hole over there we can insert that in there if i can see i, I cannot see at all there we go and i've misplaced the star sabers right here and we can place the star saber on the back now. Don't know why I'm struggling so much with this and this has come off now. Okay, there we go. And it shouldn't fall off. The connection is sturdy if you push it in all the way. For the Energon blades, we just put them in his hands. Same with the other one. And now he's there upside down. We're just gonna pretend that didn't happen and do them the right way. And here he is with both Energon blades. And lastly, his ion blasters. We can just put them on his hands. And there he is with those. So you do get a pretty decent number of accessories for this figure. On top of that, they are all 5mm compatible so you can give them to other figures. This one was probably not the best one because it's kind of bulky on the hands, but there is an idea of what you can do. The transformation is fairly simple. What I like to do first is come down to the feet and close these up. Same with this one. Then I like to untab the arms from the wheels, come down to this section of the arms, undo this and bring it out. Bring the hand down. Now take this section and bring it in just like so and tab it into place. Come to the other side and do the exact same thing. Bring the hand down and rotate this to where we can tab it into place. Fold in the arms like so and bring these in. Rotate the waist 180 degrees. Now bring this section down and try to bring the arms up like so. And now we can tab this front piece in. Now rotate this section and align this to where it tabs in. Same with this one. Make sure everything is snug. Now we can come to the back, unfold this out of the way. Take this front section of the truck, unfold it and bring it down. Tab it in place. Come do the same thing with the other side. Unfold that and bring it all the way down. Get it in place. Now we can connect the front section in. Come over to the back so we can bring in the head. Now we can come back down to the feet. We're gonna bring out these legs. Make sure this trailer hitch comes out. And now we can tab the legs together. Connect these two pieces and then bring them in over to the top like so. Now these side pieces, just bring them into place like so. Same over here on this side. And the smoke sacks do have a tab, so make sure that's in there. Same with this one. Now we can adjust this back part, fix this. Here is the vehicle mode for the figure and it looks absolutely amazing. There is weapon storage in the vehicle mode, but since we do get two of these, what we can do is bring them back together and place it on like so. And honestly, that does look kind of cool. The colors on it are still pretty good in the vehicle mode. Their other version did have some metallic silver on it. I wish this one had it as well. This doesn't want to seem to tab 
into place though. But the rest of it is pretty good. If we take a look at the tires, they do have some nice detail on them. You have some rivets throughout the truck mode over here, and you can see a little bit more of it over here and here. I do like some of the nice detail on this part. This is something you would see on an actual truck. Not the biggest fan of this color over here, but once again, all these colors are pretty much the same as the Takara release. You do get some tiny bits of yellow paint and some blue windows. Some more nice truck details on this side with all the panels and the shape of the door handle. These smokestacks are very long. I didn't realize that in the robot mode. I do like the blue tint for the headlights and you can see some headlight details inside. Underneath of the figure, everything seems pretty compact. Coming to the back, this part doesn't look too great. You have some hollow bits and it does kind of feel like something is missing. Further back here, you do have a trailer hitch and here is a trailer. Let's see if it fits on. And as you can see, it does kind of work like that. Now, APC Toys did make a trailer if that is something you want to spend the extra money on. And the size of the vehicle mode is pretty decent. Uh, I'm not going to do a size comparison with other vehicles because I am lazy. I don't want to transform multiple figures. Overall, this is a great figure and I think it's definitely worth a buy. This is the APC Dark Master. This is a third party figure that is a copy of Transformers Prime Megatron. Hey everyone, Mecha Z here, your favorite dissociating and mentally ill YouTuber, back at it again with another Transformers review. Wow, can you believe that? Thank you to the Show Z store for sending this to me. The box art doesn't look too bad, I don't have much to say. He's got the Dark Star Saber on one side, and this figure does come with that, and it looks really cool. <laughs> You got Megan on the other side. Top, fairly simplistic. At the bottom, you get a nice silhouette of Megan. I do think the box art of their initial release of this figure looked much better. Now, let's open them up. I want to die. Not today. So here's iCarly, and the figure itself looks absolutely amazing. He is one big, sexy robot. He is an upscaled version of the original Transformers Prime Megatron, and this is APC's second version of this Megatron. Their initial version had a silver metallic paint job, which I think looks much better than this gray. Like, the entire body was silver instead of gray, so like, why, why, why isn't this like that? But that does also mean no paint chipping. You do get some of that metallic silver on the shoulder pieces and the hands. I still wish the whole thing was silver, though. He is also missing the Decepticon insignia because this is a third-party figure. As always, though, the Shozy store does give you stickers. The lack of paint isn't the only difference on this figure. They didn't modify the figure to make it a little bit better. Here's a screenshot of all the things. Uh, I'm not reading any of that. Now, this has jumped up to be my most favorite Megatron figure that I own, which I don't own a lot of, actually, but he's still up there. Once again, if you do want him, link in the description below, and make sure to use code MECHA at the show's e-store. It really helps me out a lot. I want to start off by taking a look at the head sculpt. This looks amazing. The face on him looks absolutely menacing. It just looks so great. The paint job on it is done really well. The red eyes make him look very evil. He's even got a bit of white inside his eyes. I love the sharp teeth on his mouth. He looks like he could just, just like gobble me up and, and eat me. Anyways, and the rest of the head sculpt is done pretty well. You did get more of that silver paint over here and some nice purples on the side. I did kind of scuff the figure a bit, so that's unfortunate. More of that silver paint over here. Once again, I wish it was all over the figure. Shoulder pieces looking really nice with some more purple down on the arms and the hand sculpt looking really dynamic, kind of like claws. They are a bit pointy, so be careful. And the rest of the sculpt on the body looks really good. Down over to the legs, some more nice purple and silver. And the rest of the legs just looking really cool with this purple section at the back. The sculpt work looking really great. Kind of reminds me of G1 Megatron's legs a little bit. These seams on the legs are pretty noticeable, but they do split open for the transformation, so I can't really complain there. And some metallic silver on the feet. Also, let's make sure this is tabbed in all the way so the figure doesn't flop around. Turn the figure over to the back. He doesn't really have much of a backpack. It does compact down pretty well. This part can be a little loose, which is kind of annoying, but it's not too bad. Now, this section does have a spot for some weapon storage. It can be kind of tricky to get it on there, though. And we can rotate this, and that does look pretty cool. However, we will need to take this off for the transformation, which we will get to after we take a look at the accessories. First, let's take a look at the Dark Star Saber. This looks really, really cool. Even though it's only two colors, the purple on here is done really well. The sculpt work is done really cool. I love the jaggedy look on the blade and the handle, which is a simple black color, but still looks really sick. This part should be able to pop off. It's a little tight, but with that, it should make it easier for him to hold the sword, and he looks pretty badass with that. You also get his fusion cannon. The purple on here looks really cool. As you can see, there's an on-off switch. I don't have batteries for the LEDs, unfortunately, but I do love the way this looks. This attaches on his left arm, and with that, he's looking pretty sick. Bang. One shall stand, one shall fall. Why throw away your life so recklessly? That's a question you should ask yourself, Megatron. Lastly, you get two blades. These are pretty simple looking, not a whole lot to them, and they'll go on each of his arms. And once again, I think it looks great on him. This is my first APC Transformers Prime figure. They do have several other figures out there, and I kind of want more of them now because this one is really great. They have RC, Optimus Prime, Black Arachnia, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, and the price range for these is really good. I did have a bit of trouble with the transformation. Uh, to be fair, I'm also an idiot. Uh, we'll get to that later though. Now let's take a look at the articulation. The head can move up and down. You do get a head tilt. The head can move left and 
right. This arm can move out all the way over there. A full 360 arm rotation, bicep rotation, as well as an elbow bend over here. And then you get another bend over here. Some hand rotation, legs can move forward, a knee bend, legs can move out to the side and you can bring them back. Leg rotation, feet can move up and down and there's no foot pivot, but you can kind of pop this out to simulate one. And yeah, he has a pretty sick robot mode. So he is pretty big. Here he is next to Ultimate Optimus Prime, who is about a Voyager class scale figure. And here he is next to Megatron, Megatron, and Megatron, and Predaking, the only other Transformers Prime figure that I own. Now onto the transformation. He does come with instructions that go from robot mode to vehicle mode, as well as vehicle mode to robot mode, always appreciated, but the diagrams do appear to be a bit small. The first thing the instructions say to do is to bring this section down, but that's kind of hard to do if you don't move these pieces out of the way, and that's kind of hard to do if you don't move the arms out of the way. So we're going to start by moving the arms back just like that. That way we can bring this down just like so. Same with this one. These can be a bit tight, so some force will need to be, please goddamn. There we go. Now we can finally take that section. God damn. Go ahead and hinge it down. Now we can bring these sections out just a little bit. Same here, as you can see, it's kind of in there. So we'll just pull it out. Then we'll rotate this section, make sure his head is straight. And then we can bring this up right on top of his head. Let me adjust that. Next, we'll turn the figure over. We're gonna hinge in this arm, if it'll let me. You really do kind of need to fight with this figure sometimes. Next, we'll rotate the arm and then fold it in like that. Same with this side. Go ahead and do all that, bring it in. Now we can tab this section in. And this can be really tricky to do at times. So this is what this section needs to be like at this point. I know that might have been a bit confusing to watch. I do apologize. All right, next we're going to untab the legs, bring these pieces up to the front, make sure they're secured in place, spread out the legs like so, bend the knee and just move this foot piece out of the way for now. Rotate the legs to where they look like this. Also, if you haven't already, make sure these parts of the shoulders are down. Split the legs in half like so. Same with this one. And it can be a little bit difficult to do. My hands are so oily. So now we can bring in the legs. This section needs to tap into here. And then this part needs to tap into there but if i'm being honest no one's gonna know if you don't tap this section in you can be a little naughty about it <laughs> first i like to focus on this part and then move over to this underside same with this ow fuck this figure has some sharp points so be careful and then we get that in there now we're almost done we're gonna rotate this and get it to tap into there same over here and it seems like this section has undone itself and you know what we're just we're just, we're just gonna leave it like that right that, that's how it's gonna be now we can take these bits out on both sides of the wings make sure this is about as straight as you can get it it is supposed to be angled down a bit. Now the instructions say to have the feet something like this, as you can see right there. Let me know in the comments if that is accurate though. For now, we're just going to go with what the instructions say and move on with our lives. That goth girl never loved you. And here is the final vehicle mode for Megatron. Not really. We got to put the fusion cannon on. Also, we need to make sure these pieces are tabbed in like that. And there is the final vehicle mode for this Megatron figure. The head sticking out is show accurate. I do like the vents on the side. This thing does have an impressive wingspan. I do like the claws at the end. It's hard to get it to fit all on camera. Let's zoom out a bit so we can see the whole figure. The design of it is it's pretty cool. It is a copy of the original though. I will say I did struggle with the transformation a little bit. I felt like I had to fight with some parts. Transforming things on camera can be a bit difficult sometimes. The vehicle mode is pretty menacing and seems accurate to the show. From underneath, uh, it doesn't look too great, but that's how most jet modes are. Other than that, I literally do not know what else to say about the jet mode, like at all. I think both the robot mode and vehicle modes are pretty good. I think the robot mode looks the best. And there's uh, there's uh, there's not much else I can say, but it's a good figure. This is Origin Autobot Jazz, a target exclusive cartoon accurate transformation Transformers figure based off the G1 design with the Cybertronian vehicle mode straight out of the first episode of Transformers. It has a 20 step transformation process and two accessories with the Evo Fusion gimmick. Now this is part of the Buzzworthy Bumblebee subline, you like jazz. which is under the Legacy Evolution line. I really like the art of the alt mode they have going on here. I think it looks super sick. Here's a quick look at the side with all the other Transformers, the other side with some awesome artwork of jazz, and then your basic stuff at the back showing off the Evo Fusion gimmick, which we know by now isn't really a gimmick, it's just a standard toy feature. Being passed off as a gimmick by Greedy Corporation. Oh, it's not even tied in. Very interesting honeycomb pattern they got going on. Two weapons, which I'll show off later. And here is Jazz. It's a very lovely looking figure. And he does look fairly show accurate. And all the colors on him are done fairly well. The head sculpt is also really well done. Once again, it is accurate to the show. Although I do believe this is a reused head sculpt from an earlier figure. I feel like the legs on this figure are very bulky back here, as well as the backpack. The backpack is show accurate though, but it wasn't this big in the show. This back piece might shift around a bit when you're messing with the figure. That's all right. Just kind of make sure it goes in there. 
Also, on top of that, seems like I got a few scuff marks over here on my figure and might be hard to see. I'm not sure if that's from when I first transformed it. This might have scratched up against this or if my figure just came like that. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at the head sculpt. He has a really nice blue visor. The mold on the face is simple as it should be and the silver paint application looks really nice. The rest of the head is just a black color. You have his horns and vents on the sides. Are these horns? I don't know. That's the best way I can think of describing them right now. Down over to the chest piece, this does look really nice. You have the blue in the middle with the Autobot insignia stamped straight on there. Some extra car details on the side with some headlights. A little bit of more car detail. Now this is a faux front piece. It does move up for the transformation and get hidden away in the vehicle mode and there is some nice blue on the inside of it. As I was saying though, it is show accurate. Even when Jazz had his Cybertronian vehicle mode in the first episode, he also had a faux chest piece which did not appear in the vehicle mode. So that's really nice they kept that in. It does also untap from time to time, especially if you try to move the arms in like that. So just keep that in mind. Further down underneath, you got some nice sculpt work, not a whole lot going on. It is missing some paint applications. I'll pop an image up on the screen so you can see. Shoulders, I mean, not a whole lot to say. You have some ports on the side as well, which is really nice. Some basic sculpt work over here. Not a whole lot to say about the rest of the arms, except for this section where I think it's really cool that they added in those lines he had in the show. Also, the slot and the hands aren't a full circle, which is interesting. Down over to the legs looking as blocky as it should be. We can see some really cool little details inside the legs. These part of the legs are also sculpted really well and here's a closer look at his feet with two different colors of gray and here's a look underneath the feet you have two ports over there in the show g1 jazz did have wheels at the legs but since this is a cybertronian vehicle mode there are no wheels instead it's the spoilers from his alt mode here he is next to 07 movie jazz with the g1 colors this was actually my first transformers review and then i was cursed to review transformers ever since also that redeco does bring out some of the similarities between the figures mainly in the head and chest piece though and man this figure does not hold up over time this cybertronian jazz is so much better here he is next to Studio Series Bumblebee, Studio Series Battle Trap, and let's do Generation 2 Optimus Prime and the Generation 1 Hot Rod. I do want to reiterate how cartoon accurate this G1 Jazz looks in his robot mode. I feel like even more so than the Studio Series 86 version. And while these are both entirely different molds, a lot of the main differences come in the chest piece. The 86 version has a larger chest piece and more color in the waist and hips area. The legs are also done differently. Also, I'm going to be honest, I don't actually own the figure. I'm just going off images online. Articulation wise, the head can move up and down fairly well. He's got a full 360 rotation going to him. You do get a bit of a butterfly joint over here, mainly used for the transformation. These arms can move out to the side. You get a full 360 rotation, bicep rotation as well. No hand rotation. They can only move in and out for the transformation. Standard elbow bend, waist rotation. The leg can move out to the side. It can move forward. This part of the leg can move and then you can also give him a knee bend, which is kind of difficult to do, but it is there. The legs can also move back that far and you do get a leg rotation. These feet can move in for the transformation and you do get a really nice pivot. So here's the blaster he comes with. Some pretty decent sculpt work going to it. It does look similar to the original G1 Toys blaster and it is a different color and mold from the Studio Series version. If you take a look on the other side, there's a peg right there. And then here's a look at his grapple hook, which is two separate pieces. And there's not a whole lot to say detail wise about them. The blaster is just fairly basic. You can just put it in his hand just like so. And what you do for the grapple hook, you bring in the hand and you can just place it on there. Another thing you can do is make sure both of that comes off. This piece does stick in very tightly to the ports, so be a bit wary of that. But what you can do is place it on the tip of the blaster, and I'm struggling way too hard on this. And yeah, that's a thing you can do. Um, don't really remember if this was in the show or not. If you know, leave a comment down below. It's been a, quite some time since I've seen the original G1 cartoon. And lastly, what we can do with the weapon is this peg that I mentioned earlier goes in here for some weapon storage in the robot mode. I do wish both of the accessories were the right color. I don't know how hard it would have been to at least cast them in gray plastic. Now, I think the transformation on this figure is really well done. First, we're going to bring in both of the hands. Then we can close the feet, turn the head around, take this back section right over here and then bring it up. And now we can bring this down and this can be kind of tricky, but we need to tab it in place like that. Once we've done that, we can readjust this, open the chest piece and bring it up, tuck it in under there. And this might undo from time to time. So be wary of that. Now the instructions say to take the grapple hook and place it in here for weapon storage in the vehicle mode, but you don't really need to do that. Now what we can do is rotate the arms to where these are facing down because these will tab into place in the vehicle mode. Let's bring in the arms over here and we're just gonna leave them there for now. Next thing what we wanna do, untab this, which can be kind of tough. Bring that all the way out. So that way we can take this panel out, bring it back down, come 
over to the other side, do the exact same thing. And like I said, it is tricky, so you will need to apply some kind of force to it, but just be careful not to break the figure. There we go. Now we can bring this panel out and bring it down. Now what we need to do is let's move this out of the way so you can see it. We need to shift the legs in like that, but we need to do that with this down. So that way it can tab into place. So go ahead, shift the legs in. Bit tricky to do, which is kind of sucky. Now we can tab these in place, make sure this is aligned properly. And then we can tap the doors and this all into place together. It does require a little bit of finessing and some force. Pretend you didn't see that. Once you've gotten everything lined up, which embarrassingly took me a bit longer than it should have. Now what we can do is tab the arms in here. And here's a Cybertronian vehicle mode for Jazz. And like I said earlier, you can put this in here, but if you try to take it back out, it, this piece kind of gets stuck in there, but it's no big deal. All the panels line up pretty decently. They're not perfect, but it's not that big of a deal in my opinion, because this vehicle mode looks so cool. It's a very nice looking vehicle mode and very show accurate to the G1 cartoon. You can place his weapon up here at the top. I love the giant Autobot logo he has on the front. A lot of the nice little panel work and details going on. You can see the vents on the side. I believe in the show, this portion was supposed to be hollow, but I do prefer for it this way instead. Underneath that front chest piece is tucked away really nice. It has some really nice blue tinted windows and you can see it does have some designs on it. It might be a little bit hard to tell. And then these bits are resembling of doors. Why would a Cybertronian vehicle mode need doors? Maybe for smaller robots or something. That's my headcanon at least. There's a huge spoiler at the back. There's not really a whole lot of detail in the vehicle mode, which I mean does make sense. One thing I don't like is the undercarriage for the arms they have going. I feel like that really does kind of ruin the aesthetic of the vehicle mode. But here's a quick look at the rest of the under side it does look very compact and clean you have two ports on the back of the vehicle mode for effect pieces it is a pretty glossy and shiny looking vehicle mode i would say it does look aerodynamic i know nothing about aerodynamics though i just know cargo room now for size comparisons here he is next to 07 movie jazz and there's a hair over there here he is next to rise of the beast bumblebee studio series wheeljack from the bumblebee movie also known as a better looking wheeljack and the original armada hotshot because he was already transformed on my desk it is unfortunate about these scratches and that little bit of blue paint spillage over there, but overall, this is a really nice figure. This is a Studio Series 1 or 2 Optimus Prime. <laughs> Through the windowless packaging, you can see them all bondaged up. The rest of the packaging for this is pretty alright. I do like this artwork on the side, not too much on the other side. Here's a quick look at the back with the robot mode. Unfortunately, for the vehicle mode, you can see some of the, um, uh, more cursed stuff. Holy hell, what the fuck is that? Here he is, and here are the two accessories he comes with. We'll get to these later. And man, he looks really great. Nice! I'm loving the way this guy looks, and I also love the size of him. Um, uh, I feel like I said that really weird. He's definitely larger than his previous counterparts, and I'll be doing a proper comparison later, so stick around for that. The colors on this figure are absolutely amazing. It's such a vibrant, bright red. I love it. And the blues on here are such a nice deep blue. Let's start off by taking a look at the head sculpt. In my opinion, it looks really amazing just from all around. A little bit of detail on that forehead piece. You have his iconic blue eyes and the detail on the mouthpiece is done really well, I think. And the head sculpt is different from the mainline one. And I'll show how later. You get some nice tiny detail up here on the shoulders. I will say this gray part kind of looks weird, but I do feel like I'm kind of just nitpicking there. The chest piece is looking really great, I think. Some tinted see-through through plastic and the shoulder pieces are looking great with the Autobot insignia, the iconic smokestacks, some nice sculpt work for this elbow section, and then a little bit of detail on the arms. And what I really like about this figure is how the back over here is folded up nice and neatly. It's done a lot better than his previous counterparts. Turning over to the back, you have some of that nice back detail. It looks really good. You can see it is red paint, but I think the paint matching has done pretty well. You do have four ports on the back. These are different sizes. This port is five millimeter compatible, just like that. However, the bottom ones are the ports to store his weapons, like so. They do not fit in this bigger one, so. Turning the figure back around to the front, I think the abdomen section looks great. I think the color of paint they have on here looks amazing. I do also wish this was painted. It sticks out being different colors like that. Here you can see the sculpt of it is done really well. This section is all painted, unlike his mainline counterpart. This section looking nice and clean, and some really nice detail going on throughout the legs. Some nice sculpt work of the legs on the back as well. This blue section of the legs also looking really great. Here you can see all that nice detail going on. I love the way the wheels on here look. They're simple and clean. And then here's a quick look at the rest of the legs. Once again, the blue on here is absolutely amazing. Amazing. And you get some paintwork over here as well. And yeah, he looks great. Now let's do some size comparisons because he is so much bigger than his other counterparts. Here on the right is the mainline figure and you can see the Studio Series figure is so much larger and just kind of towers over him. He would call him daddy. Here he is next to a knockoff of the Studio Series 38 that I own. And you can see he's still just a bit taller than him. Here is all three of them standing side by side so you can get a better idea of how they all fare. So now let's get into the figure's articulation. So this one has head movement that can go up and down. You can do a pretty good side to side wobble and a full 360 rotation on the figure. These arms can spin 
in a full 360 as well. These arms can move out to the side, but he does end up bonking himself. Some nice bicep rotation, and then you get a double hinge joint for the elbows. Next, these hands can wobble around, and you can spin them a full 360. You get a nice full 360 waist rotation as well. You also get an ab crunch. This is also utilized in the transformation, and then you can bring the legs out to the side over there, and the leg joints are kind of tight, but you can bring them forward pretty high up. That is impressive. Unfortunately, however, they can only go back that far. You get a rotation over here, a knee bend that goes about right there. Seems to be a little bit past 90. And then the foot articulation, you can move the feet back and forth and you can pivot them to the side over there and all the way over there. And there is a full 360 rotation on the feet. Articulation on this guy is pretty good, minus the back leg movement. Also, this figure feels really solid. It feels nice to hold in my hand. It doesn't feel like they skipped out on any points on this figure, except for the vehicle mode, which we'll get to. And if you guys are curious, here's a look at the backdrop. There's a little bird. Look at the birds. Now let's get into a further breakdown with the figure's prior counterparts. So here's the optional girl and uh, not really. We're going to do the mainline movie figure. As said earlier, this one is much taller and I do feel like the articulation is a bit better. One of the main things being the head can actually move up and down compared to this one where you can't, you can't do that. So taking a look at the head, while these do look similar, this one is bigger. So it is a different head sculpt. I do feel like there's more detail on the arms of this figure, but I think the arm management is done much better on this one. And I prefer that over having some extra detail. Further down, we'll notice this section isn't painted like it is on here. Not a big deal. The major thing to note is how the legs are much more blue on the Studio Series figure. And I like that a lot. You can also see the differences in the detail and the feet are designed differently as well. Turning over to the back. Ah, shit. We'll notice that I mistransformed the mainline one. <laughs> idiot. Well, I refuse to refilm anything because I'm lazy, so we're just gonna move on. Just call me a silly goose in the comments. But now comparing to a knockoff of the Studio Series 38, I can't compare anything about the color because the color is different on here. Other than that, it's the same as the real Studio Series 38. Well, notice the head sculpt is just so much different on both of these figures. In general, it seems like a lot was changed when retooling this figure. I think I prefer the chest piece on the 102 figure. I do slightly prefer the abdomen on the 102 figure as well because it's a little bit slimmer. Quick look at the legs. We'll notice they're done entirely differently. Now I want to do a comparison with the Yolo park figure. Obviously, this one is going to have a lot more detail on it. It's a model kit, but we can take a note at some of the similarities and the differences between the two. It's not super fair to compare these two. I just thought it'd be fun because this one is a non-transforming figure, so it does have a lot more detail on it. However, I'm saving this one and the others for one future video, so make sure to subscribe for that. Here are his two accessories. I think the sword looks pretty great. It's painted in a metallic dark gray. The sculpt work and detail on here is done really well. This basically can go in his hands like that or into the arm over here, just like so. And then another way to do it is to peg it into this hole right right there. And there's a look at that. This can also be done on this side. Kind of wish it came with two of them, but that's all right. And here's a look at his blaster. Uh, I think it looks kind of pathetic, honestly. For what it is, the sculpt work on here is done pretty well. The lack of paint isn't really a big deal. And the way this goes on is basically we just open this, bring the hand in, close that back up, and we put it on with the pointy side facing outwards. And it looks like a pathetic pea shooter. It's nice to have, but it doesn't look too great. And I was wondering if any of the War for Cybertron weapons fit in, but they do not, unfortunately. So, so far with the robot mode, it's pretty impressive. I like it a lot. I 100% recommend this figure just for the robot mode alone. But we're not done yet. Let's see how the vehicle mode is, and then we'll do the transformation at the end of the video. Here is the vehicle mode, and from the front, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Once again, I love the vibrant red colors on him, but turning him over to the top, this gray section is kind of ugly, and then turning him to the back, this is a mess. This is probably one of the worst trailer beds I've seen on an Optimus Prime figure. It doesn't even look like one. It just looks like a jumbled mess. It is awful. And there's no proper way to put a trailer on him. I mean, we could do this if we take this off, and then put it on like that, and I mean, that kind of works. Let's bring these back out because it seems like I accidentally put them back in. So the truck mode detail on here is pretty good on the side. The grill piece on here looks really nice. You can see some of the tiny headlights. And then this section looks pretty good. Kind of wish it was silver. Quick look at the other side. And the wheels on him, once again, like I said earlier, they look pretty nice. The management from the underside looks pretty good. Essentially, the front mode of the truck is pretty great, except it just falls apart in the back. But now let's compare them to the other figures. We'll start with the mainline one. The Studio Series one is definitely much bigger. This one has some blue tinted windows and blue headlights. This one also has those fins at the back where this one does not. I think the top section on here looks better because this is all red and the back section on this is not great and kind of small. Still, I prefer it over this one. Now compared to the knockoff Studio Series 38, I think the truck mode on this one looks amazing. I do apologize if things pop out since it's a knockoff. Things aren't going to fit in place properly. It does seem like vehicle mode wise, this is a bit bigger than this. So that is interesting. But here's a quick look at some of the detail comparisons. This one has a lot more rivets on it. And then I look at the side of both of them. And then the trailer on this is done so much better than 
comment on this. It seems like throughout its iterations, the trailer bed has just gotten worse and worse. So now there is weapon storage in the vehicle mode. The instructions say to do this part during the transformation, but you can do it afterwards. It's not that big of a deal. Just open his legs up like that. And then we can plug the sword in on basically either side over here. So I'm just going to do this one because that's what the instructions specifically say. Close that back up. There is also weapon storage for the blaster that goes right over here and there. And you can also put it in this part as well. And then I accidentally brought these back in. I mean, weapon storage always looks kind of awkward in vehicle mode. So it's not too big of a deal. Now let's transform him from robot mode to vehicle mode. I'm going to turn into a truck now. The first thing I like to do is with the arms, open these flaps up so that way we can bring in the hands, close that back up, come here and do the exact same thing on this side, close that back up, open up this chest piece over here and then we want to take this piece which can be kind of hard to get at, grab that and then bring it up and then fold in the head. It is supposed to unclick when you do that and then bring that in, close that chest piece back up, turn around to the back, untap this section, bring that down, let's move his arms out to the side, bring out the legs, rotate the top 180 degrees and what I like to do is just bring this in here just just to kind of hold this top section in place so it doesn't flop around. We will untab it later, unfold this arm piece out all the way, and the same on this side. Bring this piece 180 degrees down, and then go ahead and do the same with this one. Take his arms and then bring them down, rotate it like this. Rotate these parts of the arms around, so that way we can bring it in. We can actually move this piece out of the way now. Get the arm all the way in there, and then bring this piece up and tab it in. Do the exact same thing for this side, bring in the arm down there, rotate it like so. Rotate this part of the arm, and then bring it in there, and then just kind of fiddle with it until you're able to get this piece to tab into place. Take this wheel out and same on the other side. Now we can come back to this section and bring it in. Make sure it's in all the way. So that is mostly the front section done. Now we're going to turn over to the back. Come to the legs, open this up, rotate this piece around, turn the foot around and just bring it in. Same thing on the other side. Bring this out, rotate this around, rotate the foot and bring it in. Bring in the legs and the feet do tap into each other. Now onto whatever the hell these things are. This piece needs to tap into here. So go ahead and bring that in and make sure everything is secure in place. Go ahead and do the same exact thing on the other side. Make sure everything is in place. Bring that down, turn over to the other side, bring that down as well. Close in these skirt pieces and they do have a pretty tight fit. They can be kind of hard to take out. Now bring out the fuel tanks on both sides and it is easy to accidentally push these back in when you're messing around with the figure so be wary of that. And finally let's take the top section and close it in. Make sure everything is lined up properly. And here is the vehicle mode for the figure. This is the VNR Volvo Optimus Prime. Is it any good? We're going to be taking a look at this figure and seeing just how much it differs from the Holiday Optimus Prime figure. Here's a quick look at the packaging. The top, the side, other side, and back. Now let's open it up. Here is our little guy, and he feels very solid in hand. You can see his face right underneath there. My name is Optimus Prime. Yeah. And you can see just how well and clean he looks on the underside. The truck mode itself looks really great. I'm really glad they released a classic red and blue version of this Optimus Prime. The red matte color for the truck looks amazing. You can see the tiny Volvo logo on the front, and this entire section with the grille is done really well. You can see a bit of the top of the truck details, some nice translucent windows. Here at the back, you can see some details and the matrix of leadership. The rims and wheels on this guy are also done really well. All this at the top of the trailer looks really, really good. And here it is compared to the Holiday Optimus Prime. If you haven't seen this video yet, go check it out at the end of this review. And as you can see, they are exactly identical, minus the colors. Everything else is exactly the same. And we will see more of that in the robot mode, so make sure to stick around for that. How are you? Why, thank you. Oh my god! Uh, I wish I were a bird. Obviously, this one is Christmas themed and has green tinted windows, and this right here is green, while these windows are a clear plastic, while this is tinted black. Both have the Volvo logo on the back as well, except this one... Why did I expect this to stand when I placed it like this? But as I was saying, this one has extra paint applications on the back, while the Holiday Optimus does not. Also, these lights on the front are yellow, while there's silver over here. And another tiny detail that I noticed is that the keyhole and the underneath of the door handle is white on here, while this one it's all just red. Also, the shades of red on both of these are very different. Which truck would you want to be easy tied with? Leave a comment down below. Please, it's very important that I know. Here are the two in vehicle mode side by side. Here's a look at the trailer. It's the same as the Earthrise one. I'm really glad I have this in accurate colors now because I don't have the Earthrise Optimus. This one has white in it and the blue stripes are a different color. A good amount of detail underneath. The back looks really nice as well although I don't know why they decided to make it black instead of gray. You can open this up also revealing a lot of detail on the inside and these are two different shades of gray. The auto launcher is entirely black with the arms being gray. I think a lot of the details do get lost in the black color but it does still look really good. The arms have a lot of great detail going on to them. He's got a few hinge joints to him and these arms are on ball joints and just like Holiday Optimus Prime, you can use the trailer as a repair station. Whoops, wrong figure. 
you can use the trailer as a repair station. There's a stand underneath to help prop this up. Now compared to the Holiday Optimus Prime trailer, they are exactly the same. Just once again, different color schemes. This is primarily one color with red and it's made to look like there's snow on the top or semen. Once again, the inside is the same, just all white. And I've already done a review on this guy, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. All right, now for the transformation, let's bring the smokestacks out to the side just like that. Now we need to bring out this side piece, same with this one, just bring it all the way out. So that way we can then bring it up, bring this one up also. Now we can take this piece out, which honestly we probably should have done that first, but it doesn't really matter. Nothing in this world matters. So time to get Isekai. Bring these pieces up, take the front section and then just split it in half. Turn the figure over, take these pieces and bring them out to the side. Now we we'll take the grill section and bring it out into the side as well. Same over here with this one, just bring it out to the side. Now we can unfold this, same with this leg, bring it all out. Out. Now we bring the foot out, unfold it, make sure that toe is out. That can be a bit tricky to do. Once again, take this foot out, unfold it, take the heel out. Now we can fold this piece and bring it up here and it needs to go under this piece. Go ahead and do the same for this one. Just get it all the way up in there. Bend the knee and rotate the grill pieces so that they can come forward. Same over here. Go ahead and do that. I definitely think the legs are the most complicated part. Now we can bring out the arms and that does expose some more detail inside the figure. Rotate these arms to where they're facing forward, just like that. Bring the rest of this down in that manner and then fold it up like that. This section needs to come down here, rotate the head around, fold in these pieces and make sure they're in place. And now what we can do is make sure this chest piece is tapped into there. So go ahead and do that. Now we can open the arms to bring out the hands. Same with this one, open it up, bring out the hand and close the arm and make sure this back section just kind of tabs into place like that. Bring up that crotch piece and make sure it tabs into place. The smokestack might have moved while transforming so just make sure it's back out to the side. And this is the robot mode for VNR Optimus Prime. And I think this is a very very sexy figure. Here he is standing with Holiday Optimus Prime, Jazz, Bumblebee, a Bible accurate angel, and Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime. He does have a lot of ports on him, two up on the shoulders, some underneath the feet. He has these two on the arms and then these ones on the legs. And then lastly, this one for weapon storage. And what am I gonna do with all these slots you ask? Right away, you'll notice that these pieces are all a glossy red, while over here, it's a matte red. Kind of a weird choice, but whatever. And speaking of the legs, the same issue I have with Holiday Optimus I do with this figure is that I feel like the bottom of the legs are just way too bulky. But the rest of the figure is really good. Now look at the head sculpt, one of the best Optimus Prime head sculpts I've seen. There is no light piping on the back of this figure, unfortunately. But he does have some killer sexy blue eyes to make up for that. And I think I prefer that over light piping. The silvers on here are also really nice, and the rest of the mold of the head is just done really well. You have a nice looking chest up here with the yellow lights and that front grill piece. Open this up to get to the matrix and the housing for the matrix looks really good. It's a bit hard to tell because it's a clear plastic and I'll show the matrix off in a second. Over to the shoulders looking nice and blocky. What does bother me is that this Autobot insignia is obscured and like that really does bother me for some reason and I'm sure it's gonna bother a lot of other people out there too. Now rest of the arms looking really good. You got some nice panel work going on with the classic Optimus Prime shapes in the yellow. Some very nice blue hands with a good mold to them. Down over here the classic looking Optimus crotch section. You'll know an Optimus Prime crotch piece when you see one. He Optimus, nice cock. A small nitpick I have is that it would be nice to see some yellow in there. Further down to the legs, where once again I feel like is the weakest part of the figure, but it does look pretty good on here along with that color scheme. Some nice blues at the front with these being red. And you do get some very nice detail with the truck split in half. I think that's very cool. You got a nice silver up here, some tiny bits of detail underneath the truck, and the rest of the legs I've come to accept being bulky at this point. Now a closer look at the matrix, the silver, gold, and the light blue is done super well. Here's a look at the back, uh, nothing special going on. He still unfortunately cannot hold the matrix, however, because the hands are just a closed fist. Here's the blaster for the figure, it folds up so you can just unfold it like that. This looks really good and it's got a lot of nice detail to it. Once again, just the Earthrise blaster, and here it is next to the candy cane blaster of Holiday Optimus. We're still gonna do the comparison, so stick around, but first we're gonna get into articulation. The head can move up and down, you can spin him a full 360. These arms can move out to the side, you get a bicep rotation, 360 arm rotation, 90 degree elbow bend, a full hand rotation, legs can move forward out to the side like that, and you can bring them back, leg rotation, knee bend, and it does kind of tease you with a double hinge over here, but that's just for the transformation. No foot rotation, but there is a pivot inwards. This is on a hinge joint and so is the heel. Oh, and I forgot wrist rotation. Now I don't think I mentioned this, but oops, wrong figure. 
Now, I don't think I mentioned this in my Holiday Optimus Prime review, but there is weapon storage at the back of the figure, just like that. All right, now we can finally compare the two figures. So once again, pretty much the exact same figure, except for the colors. I do much prefer the colors on this figure. It's just a classic Optimus Prime, and the blues on here are much better in my opinion. Looking side by side at the heads, I think the colors on the VNR Optimus really make it stand out a lot more than the Holiday Prime Optimus. This one has light piping at the back. The Holiday Optimus has that green tinted window with a white line going through the chest piece. The Autobot logo is much smaller on here and not obscured by that pin. So I'm curious as to why they didn't do that with this figure. The rest of the figure, this section's white on here. The crotch piece on this Optimus Prime has a giant C on it, which is kind of funny. We all know what the C stands for. Ha <laughs> ha, candy. Wait, what were you thinking? You disgust me. And here's a closer look at those legs, and then a side view of the legs. A closer look at the chambers, and you can see the colors on both matrixes are very different. While I do really like this figure, I much prefer this one because it is the classic colors. But don't get me wrong, both figures are amazing. Sorry, my hands are just really dry. This is the Legacy Armada Hotshot. This figure by far is the absolute best version of Hotshot, if you think anything else you're wrong. We're also gonna be taking a look at the original Armada Hotshot figure as well. On the front, you have Hotshot in his vehicle mode. Here's a look at the side and the other side, and a quick look at the back. Now let's open it up. Here's Hotshot, but in Japan, he's known as Hot Rod. But only a weeb would know that. And you know who else is a Hot Rod? You, if you subscribe to my channel. All the details and color on this figure are really great, and he resembles the original design pretty accurately. Same with the head and the face sculpt, and you can see he's got a few little details on there. You can bring his visor down, which does look really nice, and has some detail on it as well. He has some very nice blue eyes, and if you hold it up to a light, it kind of seems like there's some gaps in between them. Leave a comment below if you know anything about that, because that's not light piping. His face is just a simple gray color. He's got a little bit of panel working on his shoulder and just like the original he has an Autobot logo on the top left. The chest piece is just a red color with some nice silver on it. The rest of the body is mostly very red. There's a few little details over here in the crotch piece. Not too much detail on the rest of the legs. This does have some hollow gaps on the legs unfortunately. And down here at the bottom of the legs you have a little bit of detail going on. Also for the back leg pieces make sure to bring these in. The figure doesn't originally come like that. If you do happen to see it out throughout this review. No you didn't. The figure does have a bit of a backpack and some chunk legs, but so did the original. The inside of the legs look absolutely horrendous though. Like goddamn, that's bad. And just like the original, you can bring this back piece out and flip it over to the top. Now on the original figure, you did need a minicon to do that, but this figure doesn't come with Jolt, unfortunately. Funby Studios does have a 3D print file for Jolt available on their Patreon, as well as some free gap fillers. Also, I'm a silly little man. This is the correct orientation. I mean, like, does it really matter though? Does it? Now these top parts on the shoulders might easily untab sometimes, and you just need to line them up right over here on that part. They might pop off throughout the rest of the video if you see it. No, you didn't. Here's a quick look at his hands. There's just a little bit of detail. And unfortunately, the arms are hollow as well. For an accessory, he comes with his engine piece, which is also a weapon. I do like the silver color of the paint. Now let's take a look at the original Armada Hotshot. Now, I really do think that this figure is a vast improvement over the original, which isn't super fair to say since they're like almost 20 years apart. Now here's the original Armada figure. Unfortunately, I don't have Jolt. I don't have any Tinder matches either. If these two Hotshots shots met each other, do you think that they would kiss? Now this one also has a visor with some details on it. It's not as colorful as this one. And on the original figure, the head is just molded in place and cannot move. Thankfully, the legacy version does not have that issue. Now the eyes on the original are a much deeper color of blue, and his face is silver instead of gray while also being far more expressive. And you should expressively check out my Patreon, which is only $1 a month, because if everyone gave $1, I'd be able to, um, oh, what could I do? Go to a strip club? Pay off my student loans. Now for this figure, you can take the chest piece off, but he can't really hold it. Now comparing the chest pieces, over here he has a design on this part of the chest while on this one it's very plain. The silver paint on here is much duller than the silver paint on the newer figure, and the whole design of this thing is done much better on the legacy version. Now the crotch piece on the Armada version does have more detail on it. Now it might be hard to see, but the thighs definitely have more detail on the original version. This leg also does have some hollow points in it. Now down on the front of the legs, this piece is colored in here, but the legacy version has much more detail on it. Now a major thing to note about this figure is that the top of the car is attached to the arms on the original figure, while the legacy version doesn't have it like that. Instead, the top of the car is down behind the legs, and I do think it's a much better choice to have it like that. Another difference is that the front car piece on the legs are facing different sides. Here's a quick comparison of both of their engines. This one has these engine pieces out into the side, while over here they're facing upwards. This one has that minicon port in it, but this one kind of teases you by sort of having it in there. In a look at the bottom, you can see that this is much thicker, so that way it can be used as a weapon. And while this one is silver, this one has a slightly bluish color to it. An original hotshot can hold 
build a new one's weapons. Now, while I don't have Jolt, I do have many other minicons I can use. So we can put this one on the back and push it up, and it immediately fires out this piece. Now, this does reveal a bit more detail on the back of the figure, and this piece also has quite a bit of detail on it as well on the front and some on the back. While the new one doesn't really have a whole lot of detail on this top piece. It does, however, have a little bit of stuff going on in here. Now, for the articulation on this figure, this goes up and down. It can move all the way back. The head can only rotate 360. These little pieces right here can move up, and if you leave them up, you can rotate the arms a full 360. The arms are able to go out that high. Rotation at the biceps. You should buy my merch from my Etsy store, link in the description below. There's a 90 degree elbow bend. I'm very bad at cutting my nails. You get a waist rotation. You can bring the leg out that much. You can bring it out to the side, and you can bring it back. Now for a proper knee bend, you're gonna need to move this out of the way, and then you can move it up to get a 90 degree knee bend. And then you can also move it from this joint. The feet can move like this, and there's quite a bit of a foot pivot on this. Now for the articulation on this hot shot, this thing can move, the head cannot move, the arms just have this sideways movement, arm bend, the legs can spread out, they can move forward and back, and you get a limited knee bend, and that's it. Now for size comparisons, he's a bit smaller than the original, Galaxy Force Exe Geyser, the Armada Thundercracker, that's a re Deco of Starscream, the Legacy Armada Starscream, Armada Blur, Armada Red Alert, and Cybertron Red Alert. Now the transformation on this figure is super simple. Connecting the legs and the top pieces can be a bit finicky though, but to start off the transformation we need to undo these shoulder pieces here. Just bring them out to the back and bring this all the way up. Now we can open this chest piece, bring in the head and close the chest piece. I really think this is a unique way to hide the head in the transformation. He's like a turtle or something. Now we can close the feet on the figure. And these arm pieces are supposed to be rotated this way but we'll worry about that later. Now let's rotate the waist and bring out the top section of the car on both sides. Now we need to just bring the legs up and in and have the thigh piece go inside and once you've done the other leg rotate these pieces to the top. Make sure to bring out these parts inside. Now we can bring in the arms. Make sure they're facing like this towards where the fingers are down and to where the back of the hand is facing up. Now this part of the transformation can be a little bit finicky. Basically align these pieces up like so and then make sure that goes in there and that these top parts go in here. You need to put one over the other and then sort of hook it in place. Now we can align the rest of the figure up. Now we can close these side pieces in and these should tab into this section of the arms. Now bring this over like that and make sure it tabs into these pieces. So go ahead and get that in there. It might be a little tricky. Now we can bring the side spoiler pieces down, put the engine on top. Now you can tab in the feet to the front of the figure. This probably would have been better to do at the first step, but since I'm a fake Transformers fan, I forgot. And while this figure it doesn't come with a minicon. If you can find the right minicon that's slim enough, you can attach it into that port. But if the minicon is too thick, it won't work. Now, Armada Hot Shots transformation is much more simple. Bring out the legs to the side, bring the feet in, snap the legs into place. Now, rotate the arms and bring them in like that. Same here. Pieces might undo themselves, so just make sure to snap them back into place. Snap the top into place and bring this down. Attach his engine piece. And there is the original Armada Hot Shot in his vehicle mode. And if you press the engine piece in, it brings out his chainsaws. And I'll compare the two in a minute. First, let's go back to Legacy Hot Shot. I really like the vehicle mode and it does look a lot like the originals. And one thing that does bother me is the paint matching at the top here doesn't really match the rest of the figure. It's very noticeable and I feel like this is something that's definitely going to chip over time. He has some very dark blue tinted windows. He has a little bit of detail at the back of the figure. There's a little gas tank over there. You have the silver on the front and the silver headlights. And this engine piece holds in place really well. But if you take it off, you can see a little bit more detail underneath it. And you can see more of the detail on the silver area. He has a huge front bumper piece and it doesn't seem like this is properly aligned. Doesn't matter. The underneath is very clean. The figure really compacts into it very well. Now side by side with the original Hot Shot, you can clearly see the differences. This one is definitely much longer and it's easier to see the color differences between the two. This one has a full spoiler and you can see Hot Shot's head through the back. While this one just kind of has a spoiler cut in half, which is kind of awkward in my opinion. And in the Legacy version, you don't see Hot Shot's head because he's a turtle. These designs at the top are different on both of them. And instead of translucent windows, this one just has some dark blue paint. Here's a look at them from the side view. This one has red inside the wheels. And I do think that it's unfortunate that this one doesn't have any of the saw details on it because on the original figure, they look really nice. Here's a look at the front of the figures. They both have the general same parts painted, but this one has some red at the front while this one does not. Holy crap, are you still here? Did you actually watch the entire video? Uh, if you did, thank you. And please let me know by leaving a comment below.